ear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. For the Lord hath spoken, I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. The Most High is opening up the sealed scriptures to those of us with an ear to hear. Thus says the Most High through his prophets, teachers, and everyone he chose to understand the mysteries. The scripture said, many are called, but only a few are chosen. Well, many are called, but few are chosen. With the world being given into the hands of the wicked, as well as the population to the wicked is massive, I can see how only a few are chosen to do the will of the Most High. Only a remnant have decided to be about their father's business. Only a remnant decided to only serve the father in the spirit and in truth, just as his words command of his people. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth. For the father seeketh such to worship him. Israelites, if the beast religion is all-knowing, how come the world was given into the hands of the wicked? If the religious leaders of today are chosen by the Most High to do His will, why are they hiding the truth from you? How come they didn't tell you that you are the true Israelites? Why do you continue to share the same doctrines with the serpent seed? The people who stole your identity do not even call themselves after the Father's name. If the Romans had it right, how come they ignored the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High? Why do they continue to worship idols as gods? Remember, Israelites, pagans worship multiple gods. Israelites, even the imposters that have stolen your identity call you idolaters, especially all of you who are trapped in Christianity. The sin of idolatry has been a problem with the Israelites from the beginning. It shouldn't be a surprise that the spirit of idolatry continued to ravish the Israelite nation. The moment Moses went to get instructions, as well as the commandments from the angel of the Lord, the Israelites immediately turned to idol worship when they asked Aaron to create the golden calf idol. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what has become of him. Our ancestors had no problem worshipping idols, despite witnessing the power of the Most High through Moses and the countless other prophets he showed himself strong through. The Israelites saw how the Most High delivered them from the house of bondage in Mizraim. The Most High made countless promises to the Israelites and fulfilled the covenants. However, it didn't stop the Israelites from running to other gods. For some reason, the Israelites in this generation seem to believe that the sin of idolatry in the Israelite bloodline have ceased. The sin of idolatry have increased in our nation. Israelites, an idol can be anything, a person, a place, or a thing. Celebrity culture is idol worship. Anything you put before the Most High, the Father, is an idol. Many Israelites worship the one the Most High was sent to deliver them from the final captivity. Despite the scripture saying that the Most High would not share his glory with anyone, it doesn't stop Israelites in this generation from giving the glory of the Father to another. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. 
I find it interesting that many people worship the false Messiah as God. Somehow, they cannot make the connection of them worshiping the Messiah is idolatry. The scriptures made it very clear that you shouldn't worship nor bow down to any other gods. Despite the Most High giving us his commandments, the Israelites in this generation believe it's okay to worship the Messiah. The reason so many Israelites believe the scriptures give them permission to worship the Messiah, they have been indoctrinated by their enemies. Israelites, your enemies don't have your best interests at heart. That is why they are your enemies. Not only does your enemies don't have your best interests at heart, but they also have a perpetual hatred towards you. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Living in the land of your enemies, and there's enmity between you and them, your enemies are not going to direct you on the path that would lead you to salvation. That is why they have lied to you for multiple generations. Your enemies participated in helping you forget your identity, as well as the statutes, commandments, and laws of the Most High. The synagogue of Satan gave your bloodline to another group of people. The synagogue of Satan is not afraid to steal the Messiah and the Most High's identity in the scriptures. Despite the Most High giving everyone a warning not to tamper with his words, it didn't stop the synagogue of Satan from altering the scriptures. After they inserted their images, the workers of iniquity manipulated you with the altered scriptures. The synagogue of Satan made sure to insert words that support their doctrines. They changed names to ancient cities as well as the names to many bloodlines. All of their alterations were inserted into the Bible to deceive you. That is why it's important for you to have the Holy Spirit revealing truth to you. Without the Holy Spirit, you will believe the alterations done in the scriptures by the synagogue of Satan. The Holy Spirit can show you what is hiding in plain sight. Albeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. The Messiah said that he wouldn't leave us comfortless. Before the departure of the Messiah, the Messiah said to the disciples that he will pray to the Father to send us another comforter. The Messiah asked the Father to send us another comforter that will abide in us forever. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. The comforter the Most High sent is the Holy Spirit. Anyone who served the Father in the Spirit and in truth should have the Holy Spirit living in them. Not only is the Holy Spirit with you, the Holy Spirit should be your guide. The scripture said in the book of John that the Most High will send the Holy Spirit in the Messiah's name. The scriptures went on to say it's the job of the Holy Spirit to teach you all things as well as to bring all things to your remembrance. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Israelites, did you notice how the synagogue of Satan altered the scriptures to call the Spirit of the Most High the Holy Ghost? These types of alterations is all over the Bible. You have to use discernment to know the proper word that should be there is the Holy Spirit. Ghosts are not holy. The Most High Spirit is not a ghost. The Holy Ghost to the heathens are familiar spirits. False prophets use familiar spirits to prophesy. Familiar spirits are unclean spirits that travel in your bloodline. Never refer to the Spirit of the Most High as a ghost. There's nothing holy about a ghost. In addition, ghosts don't comfort you. They terrorize you. Israelites, when you see alterations like this, you need to use discernment to understand the word of the Most High. Also, you need to know the word of the Most High to know that seeking a person with a familiar spirit is an abomination before the Most High. The Father forbid you to interact with familiar spirits and those who use familiar spirits to lie to you. Religion used familiar spirits to indoctrinate you, the Holy Ghost. King Saul paid the ultimate price when he seeked the woman with a familiar spirit. 
he lost his life, his kingship, and his relationship with the father. So Saul died for his transgression, which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not, and also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it, and inquired not of the Lord. Therefore he slew him, and turned the kingdom unto David, the son of Jesse. When you have the guidance of the Holy Spirit, you will begin to make the connections in the scriptures. Not only will the Holy Spirit guide you into all truth, but you will also begin to see what is hiding in plain sight. Israelites, you heard the scripture said the Holy Spirit will reveal all things to you. It shouldn't surprise you when a person say the Holy Spirit reveals such and such. Why did some of you get upset when I said to you that the Holy Spirit revealed to me that Michael was the Messiah? The scriptures clearly said the comforter, the most high sent to us, will guide us into all truth. In addition, reveal all things to us. I didn't tell you a person revealed this truth to me. I said the Holy Spirit revealed this truth to me. It shouldn't be strange to some of you that the Holy Spirit is speaking. If you truly follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of unbelief shouldn't steal the truth that is being revealed. If you knew how the Most High operate, you would know that the Father still interact and speak with his people until this day. The Most High is operating through the righteous. The remnant know the voice of the Father, and the stranger's voice they will not follow. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Many Israelites are being guided by familiar spirits who hide behind the title Holy Ghost. That is why a lot of Israelites couldn't understand me. Our forefathers relied on the Holy Spirit to guide them. Jacob, our father, relied on his dreams to communicate with the Father. By now, you should know that the Most High communicate with you in the spirit realm. The scripture in the book of Numbers said, If there's a prophet among you, I will make myself known to him in a vision and speak to him in dreams. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. Israelites, this is what walking in the spirit is all about, following the guidance of the Holy Spirit that is within you. If Google is where you find your truth, then you're not walking in the spirit. The Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. This is why I say to follow up with the Father to further your understanding of what you hear on this channel. I know if you go to the Father, he will confirm everything. Confirmation from the Spirit of the Most High come with an absolute assurance that no one can steal from you. That is why I always tell you to ask the Father. Unfortunately, a lot of Israelites don't follow the Holy Spirit. They grieve the Holy Spirit. Majority of Israelites follow the heathens. The heathens are guided by familiar spirits. Because so many Israelites follow the heathens, they have allowed the blind to lead them into a ditch. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Israelites, you must utilize the comforter the Most High sent to help you understand all things. Without the Spirit of the Most High, you will believe the deceptions in the scriptures, the demonic teachings from the lawless Messiah, as well as the false history the heathens have told in the beast system. Instead of taking the time to get to know the Father in the awakening, many Israelites are still rejecting the Father and the Messiah because of a lack of knowledge. When you reject knowledge, the Most High rejects you. When you don't have the Father, the Satans will destroy you. That is why our nation was destroyed and our leaders led us into captivity due to their failure to serve the Father in the spirit and in truth. They trade the Father for the little gods that couldn't do a thing for them. And those who understand not the Lord, who fear not God, who accept not but reject, who do not receive them, the books, a terrible judgment await these. Hath a nation changed their gods? which are yet no gods. But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Israelites, salvation for you is destruction and judgment for the heathens. Keep that in mind. They will never lead you onto the narrow road that leads to life. 
If they wanted to save your life, they would never have created a graven image that became a stumbling block to many people. The synagogue of Satan altered the image of the Messiah to resemble theirs. In addition, teach many lies via demonic doctrines. The sin of idolatry never ceased from our nation. Every generation continue in idolatry in various ways. The worship of the Messiah as the Most High is how this generation is giving consent to the spirit of idolatry to destroy them. Israelites, the reason you need to know the identity of the Messiah before he became flesh to deliver you from the sin of idolatry. A lot of you have restored the image of the Messiah. You utilize the scriptures in the book of Revelation to show the world that the Messiah was an indigenous black person and stop there. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they had burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Many Israelites stop seeking truth about the Messiah once they've restored the image of the Messiah. The moment some Israelites found out that the Messiah looked like them, they went to debate the workers of iniquity about their findings. Israelites are confident that the image the heathens have been circulating for years wasn't the correct depiction of the Messiah when he walked the earth. Majority of you didn't bother to find out the identity of the Messiah before he became flesh. Many of you accepted the various doctrines from religion about the Messiah. You believe he is God in the flesh. You believe you must accept him to be saved. You believe you have to pray in his name. You believe he died for the sins of the world as well as taking away your sins. You believe every doctrine Rome have taught you. Israelites, that is why I said there's no difference between Yahshua and Jesus. The only thing you did was change his skin color and continue to worship Yahshua as God. Israelites, it's very important for you to know that the Messiah is not the Most High, the Father in the flesh. Never in the scriptures did the Messiah said he was the Father. Never in the scriptures did the Messiah said for you to worship him. After the Messiah said he will pray to the Father to send us a comforter, the Messiah said in the book of John that he will return to the Father and come again. The Messiah went on to say that the Father was greater than him. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice because I said I go unto the Father, but my Father is greater than I. Out of the mouth of the Messiah, he said that the Father is greater than him and that he was returning to the Father. If the Messiah was God in the flesh, why must he return to himself? Why did the Messiah say that the Father is greater than him if he is the Most High? How can the Messiah, being the Father, sit at the right hand of the Father if he's the Father? Why didn't the Messiah tell the people that he is the Most High if he was? The world is worshiping the Messiah as God today. However, when he walked the earth, they rejected him. What changed? Israelites, the Messiah said the Father is greater than him. That is absolutely true. The Father is beyond what you and I can ever imagine. The heavens can't contain the Father. Do you honestly believe that the human body he made as a temporary suit for us could contain the Father in all of his glory? But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house that I have builded. And the great glory sat thereon, and his raiment shone more brightly than the sun and was whiter than any snow. None of the angels could enter and could behold his face by reason of the magnificent and glory, and no flesh could behold him. And the Lord called up one of the older angels, terrible and menacing, and placed him by me, in appearance white as snow, and his hand like ice, having the appearance of great frost. And he froze my face because I could not endure the terror of the Lord, just as it is not possible to endure a stove fire and the sun's heat and the frost of the air. And the Lord said to me, Enoch, if thy face be not frozen here, no man will be able to behold thy face. You see the compass of my work like your own, 
but I have seen the Lord's limitless and perfect compass, which has no end. You hear the words of my lips as I heard the words of the Lord, like great thunder incessantly with hurling of clouds. And now, my children, hear the discourse of the father of the earth, how fearful and awful it is to come before the face of the ruler of the earth. How much more terrible and awful it is to come before the face of the ruler of heaven, the controller of quick and dead, and of the heavenly troops, who can endure that endless pain. Enoch's face had to be frozen when he was in the presence of the Most High. The scripture said if his face wasn't frozen, no man would be able to look at Enoch's face. All of this happened to Enoch for being in the presence of the Father. I hope you can understand why the scripture said no man can see the father and live. The Most High said in the book of Isaiah that his people don't know him. If you believe the Messiah is the father in the flesh, you truly don't know the father. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. I am the Lord. And there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. The Most High, the Father, does not operate in the flesh. He is spirit. The Father does nothing according to the flesh. The Most High will not operate in the flesh, but he will send his angels to do his will in the flesh. Just as the Messiah kept saying to us in the scriptures that the Father sent him. The reason you need to know the identity of the Messiah before he became flesh, the sin of idolatry. The Most High said in his commandments that we shouldn't make any images of anything in the earth, in the heavens, or in the sea. The Father went on to say that we shouldn't bow down to worship the angels or anything. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Take heed unto yourselves, lest ye forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make you a graven image, or the likeness of any thing, which the Lord thy God hath forbidden thee, for the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. The laws of the Most High made it very clear we shouldn't worship the angels, the animals, or anything the Most High created as gods. When you worship and serve the Messiah as God, you're doing exactly what the laws command you not to do. Because so many of you stop at restoring the image of the Messiah and not his identity, a lot of Israelites are being destroyed for worshiping the Messiah as God. The Most High made it very clear that he is our Savior, our God, and our King. The Father said to us, there is no other God but him. When you worship the Messiah as God, you're guilty of the sin of idolatry. The worship of the Messiah as God is how this generation of Israelites and the other descendants of Adam and Eve are perishing. You transform the Messiah, your deliverer, into a God. I am the Lord. And there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. Religion encourages you to worship the Messiah as God because they indoctrinate you to believe he is God in the flesh. Whenever the people hear the term Messiah, they automatically believe God in the flesh. When you hear the term Messiah, you should think of deliverance. Another meaning to the word Messiah is deliverer. Before you knew the Messiah as Yahshua or Jesus, he is the archangel Michael. The holy angel Michael is the one that became flesh, not the most high the father. I have shown you countless scriptures and books confirming Michael as the Messiah. In the Testament of Levi, the holy angel Michael revealed himself to Levi as the angel that intercede on our behalf and all the righteous. And I said to him, I pray thee, O Lord, tell me thy name 
that I may call upon thee in the day of tribulation? And he said, I am the angel who intercede for the nation of Israel, that they may not be smitten utterly, for every evil spirit attacketh. And after these things I awake, and bless the Most High, and the angel who intercedeth for the nation of Israel, and for all the righteous. The Messiah is known to us as our intercessor. The angel that opened the gates to Levi revealed himself to Levi as the intercessor. The prophecy of the Messiah was to take place many generations after Levi, the progenitor of the tribe of Levi. Therefore, the Messiah during the generation of Levi operated as the angel of the Lord. Several generations later, after the death of the patriarchs, did Michael became flesh. Our fathers were aware of Michael becoming flesh because all the sons of Jacob were knowledgeable about the Lamb of the Most High that will come to help their children in the latter days. Dan, the son of Jacob, called the Lamb of the Most High an angel that is the mediator between the Most High and men. Dan went on to say that the angel would stand up to the kings of the earth. And now fear the Lord, my children, and beware of Satan and his spirits. Draw near unto God and unto the angel that interceded for you, for he is a mediator between God and men. And for the peace of Israel, he shall stand up against the kingdom of the enemy. The Messiah is known as the mediator between the Most High and men. Dan called him an angel before he became flesh. All of this information I have shared with you in previous messages about the Messiah, the Prince. Judah plays an important role in the lineage of the Messiah. When I say Judah, I am talking about Judah, the son of Jacob, not the tribe of Judah. The Messiah spoke with Judah. All of this is written in the Testament of Judah. A lot of the information Judah shared with his children before he transitioned, Judah said the angel of the Lord revealed this information to him. When Judah was informing his children of the resurrection of all the righteous at the coming of the Messiah, he revealed to his children the role they have in the coming kingdom. Judah went on to say that he was the angel of his presence. As the heaven is higher than the earth, so is the priesthood of God higher than the earthly kingdom, unless it falls away through sin from the Lord and is dominated by the earthly kingdom. For the angel of the Lord said unto me, The Lord chose him rather than thee, to draw near to him, and to eat of his table, and to offer him the first fruits of the choice things of the sons of Israel. But thou shalt be king of Jacob. And after these things shall Abraham and Isaac and Jacob arise unto life, and I and my brethren shall be chiefs of the tribes of Israel. And the Lord blessed Levi, and the angel of the presence, me, the powers of glory, Simeon, the heavens, Reuben, the earth, Asakar, the sea, Zebulon, the mountains, Joseph, the tabernacle, Benjamin, the luminaries, Dan, Eden, Naphtali, the sun, Gad, the moon, Asher. Israelites, it makes sense that the Messiah would interact with Judah, especially if the Messiah is known as the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Also, by the Messiah will Judah's kingdom will be restored. You heard in the scripture, Judah referred to himself as the angel of his presence. Judah also had a warrior angel that followed him everywhere he went. This angel gave Judah might to overpower his enemies. Therefore my father was free from anxiety in the wars when I was with my brethren. For he saw in a vision concerning me that an angel of might followed me everywhere that I should not be overcome. There's a lot of information revealing that the Messiah is an angel. I have shared this information with you. However, majority of people reject the knowledge. I've even shared scriptures in the Bible that confirm the Messiah the Prince. A lot of people use the scripture in the book of Hebrew that said, which of the angels did the father said, you are my son, today I have become your father, to prove that the Messiah can't be an angel. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee, and again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. 
I have plans to do a message solely on this verse, just as I did with the verse in the book of John that said, the word became flesh and the word was God. If it's still necessary, I will continue to do a teaching on that verse. Today, I will briefly decode the verse in Hebrews to the Israelites that claim the Messiah can't be an angel. The first few words in that scripture prove that the Messiah is an angel. It's always the little things we overlook that reveal so much to us. Also, the Holy Spirit pointing out certain words. The first part of that verse said, For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son? For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son? This day have I begotten thee. Israelites, the key word in that scripture is which. The scripture is saying, Which other angel did the Most High has ever said that you are my son? No other angel except that one angel he selected. The verse didn't say the Most High wasn't speaking of his angels. The verse is saying, which one of his angels did he say today, you are my son and I have begotten you. The Most High created many angels. The angels are known as the sons of God. Out of all the angels he created, Michael is the one he selected to say, thou art my son this day, I have begotten you. The Most High said this to Michael for his faithfulness and sacrifice. That is why the Most High made him prince over his chosen people and the deliverer to all the righteous. Also, it was his destiny. The next verse in the same chapter said, He brought the first begotten into the world. And the scriptures went on to say, Let all the angels of the Most High worship him. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. This verse proved that the Most High sent his begotten son into the world. We know that his begotten son is an angel. In addition, the scripture said, let the angels worship him. It didn't say we should worship him. I believe the correct word to use in that verse is reverence. The synagogue of Satan translate the word to worship. Israelites, in the angelic realm, it's normal for the angels to reverence higher ranking angels. The angels will bow down to other angels that are of a higher rank. The higher ranking angels also rule over other angels. The archangel Michael is the highest ranking angel out of all the angels. He is the son of God. The holy angel Michael is always named first because he is first. When the Most High allowed Enoch to see the ins and out of his creation, the two angels that was with him couldn't continue past the seventh heaven. The archangel Gabriel was the one to take Enoch through the eighth and ninth heaven. When I saw all these things, those men said to me, Enoch, thus far is it commanded us to journey with thee. And those men went away from me, and thereupon I saw them not. And the Lord sent one of his glorious ones, the archangel Gabriel, and he said to me, Have courage, Enoch, do not fear. Arise before the Lord's face into eternity. Arise, come with me. Gabriel is ranked after Michael. Once Enoch reached the end of the ninth heaven, it was the archangel Michael who took Enoch into the presence of the Most High. And the archistratage, Michael, lift me up and led me to before the Lord's face. The scriptures in the book of Enoch called the holy angel Michael the archistratage. The word archistratage means supreme commander or chief commander. Religion teach that Jesus, who is supposed to be the Messiah, is the commander in chief to the army of the Most High. When I look into the scriptures in the Bible, I couldn't find any scriptures that said Jesus was the commander in chief. What I did find was the angel of the Lord who appeared to Joshua. When Joshua asked him if he was for them or against them, the angel said he is the captain to the host of heaven or the army of the most high. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us, or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord, am I now come? And Joshua fell on his face to the earth, and did worship, and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? 
and the captain of the Lord's host, said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. Every time I search the word of the Most High to find the scriptures that support the doctrines from Rome, I can never find a scripture that support their doctrines. When you know the identity of the real Messiah, you can find him hidden everywhere in the scriptures in the Bible. I know some of you are thinking the man that is identified as the captain to the host of heaven said to Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot for the place where you stand is holy. Some of you automatically believe he is the most high. We have heard the same request made to Moses in the scriptures when Moses approached the burning bush. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. In the book of Exodus, when Moses interacted with the being that appeared to Joshua as a man, he was called the angel of the Lord. When the same being came to Joshua, the scriptures called him the captain to the host of heaven. In both encounters, the angel of the Lord or the captain to the host of heaven said to remove their shoes because they were standing on holy ground. Religion have used these scriptures to say the beings that appear to Joshua and Moses is the Most High, the Father, and some say the Messiah. When the Holy Spirit is guiding you in the scriptures, the Holy Spirit will show you what is hiding in plain sight. Religion used these verses to say it's the Most High, the Father. The book of Acts in the Bible confirmed the being that appeared to Moses and Joshua was indeed an angel. This Moses whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send, to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. How many times have you read that scripture in the book of Acts and didn't make the connection? When you have the Holy Spirit, you will be able to see what is hiding in plain sight. Israelites, the scriptures are sealed. Only the Holy Spirit can open the sealed scriptures to you. Also, the scriptures are altered. The synagogue of Satan changed certain words to further push their agendas. This is why you need the spirit of discernment. I can show you in the scriptures in the Bible where the holy angel Michael is given the title chief prince and a great prince. The book of Baruch gave the holy angel Michael the title commander in chief as well as the key holder to the kingdom. When Enoch saw the Messiah with the father, Enoch went on to describe the appearances of the Father and the Messiah. And there I saw one who had a head of days, and his head was white like wool. And with him was another being whose countenance had the appearance of a man, and his face was full of graciousness like one of the holy angels. Israelites, did you hear the scriptures? Enoch described two different beings, one whose head was white like wool, Enoch said the other being had the appearance like a man and his face was full of graciousness like one of the holy angels. Enoch didn't say like the angels, but like one of the holy angels. Enoch said there were two beings, confirming the Messiah and the Father are two different entities. This one scripture refute the God in the flesh doctrine. The scriptures went on to say in the book of Enoch that the Messiah that was with the head of days, a lot of you believe the head of days is the Messiah, the head of days is the father. The angel that was with Enoch explained who the other entity that was with the head of days and his purpose. And I asked the angel who went with me and showed me all the hidden things concerning that son of man, who he was and whence he was and why he went with the head of days. And he answered and said unto me, This is the Son of Man who has righteousness, with whom dwelleth righteousness, 
and who revealeth all the treasures of that which is hidden. Because the Lord of Spirits have chosen him, and whose lot has been preordained before the Lord of Spirits in uprightness forever, and this Son of Man whom thou hast seen shall raise up the kings and the mighty from their seats and the strong from their thrones. As you can see, Israelites, the Messiah and the Father are not the same. The Messiah is a created being that was predestined just like some of us are predestined. The Messiah came to fulfill everything that was written about him, just as the scriptures reveal to us in the Bible. The Messiah have been telling us from the day he became flesh that he came to fulfill everything that is in the laws of Moses and in the prophets concerning him. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me, concerning me, concerning me. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures. Religion have Hellenized the scriptures. The workers of iniquity use the scriptures you just heard to say the laws are done away with. In addition, they have indoctrinated the world to believe the Messiah is the Most High, the Father in the flesh. Today, the Most High have opened the scriptures to you to put an end to the doctrine of the Messiah being God in the flesh. The Messiah is the chief commander, the great prince, the prince of life, the one who is like the Most High, the holy angel Michael. The scriptures in the book of Enoch said he was chosen to destroy all the kings of the earth and to redeem our people and all the righteous. Just as you heard Dan, the son of Jacob said, the angel that is a mediator between God and men would do in the testament of Dan. And now fear the Lord, my children, and beware of Satan and his spirits. Draw near unto God and unto the angel that interceded for you. For he is a mediator between God and men. And for the peace of Israel, he shall stand up against the kingdom of the enemy. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Dan also differentiate the Most High from the angel that would stand up for the Israelites and all the righteous. Israelites, now do you see why you must unmask the Messiah to reveal his identity? A lot of you believe the Messiah is God in the flesh. I am here to tell you that religion lied to you. They made you believe he was God in the flesh to keep you in sin. The sin of idolatry is a sin the Most High hates. We are in the land of our captivity because of the sin of idolatry. We lost everything because of the great sin of idolatry. We are being persecuted and judged because our ancestors forsook the Most High, the Father. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, saying, We have sinned against thee, both because we have forsaken our God and also served Balaam. And the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Did not I deliver you from the Egyptians and from the Amorites, from the children of Ammon and from the Philistines? The Zidonians also, and the Amalekites, and the Maonites did oppress you. And ye cried to me, and I delivered you out of their hand. Yet ye have forsaken me, and served other gods. Wherefore I will deliver you no more. Go, and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. This generation of Israelites continue in the great sin of our fathers, idolatry and rebellion. Behind the spirit of rebellion is witchcraft. Religion is idolatry and witchcraft. You can't practice witchcraft without idolatry. This generation of Israelites is worshiping a God our ancestors have not known, a God that was made with man's hands, a God of wood and stone in the land of their captivity. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. And there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. 
even wood and stone. Israelites, do you now understand when I say there is no difference between Yeshua and Jesus if his skin color is the only thing you restored? The real lamb of the most high is in the scriptures. I will continue to show you him hiding in the scriptures. Unfortunately, majority of people do not know the real lamb of the most high. Many have rejected him. So many have traded him for the God of this world. Israelites, when you restore the identity of the Messiah, the scripture in the book of Matthew makes perfect sense when the Messiah said, depart from me. I never knew you. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. The world and many Israelites know Jesus, the God of this world, in the flesh. They don't know the Deliverer, the Holy Angel Michael. The Lamb of the Most High is only trying to lead the righteous back to the Most High, the Father. He doesn't want glory. He doesn't want worship. The Messiah said he is not seeking his own glory. The Messiah went on to say there's one that seeks glory and worship, and that is the Most High, the Father. And I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. The Most High said he want his servants to worship and serve him in the spirit and in truth. You will not find truth in religion. You won't find the spirit of the Most High in religion. You will find a ghost pretending to be the Holy Spirit. Therefore, you won't be able to walk in the spirit following religion. Judah said in the Testament of Judah that his children will follow those with a familiar spirit and practice witchcraft and idolatry. Now I have much grief, my children, because of your lewdness and witchcrafts and idolatries, which ye shall practice against the kingdom, following them that have familiar spirits, diviners, and demons of error. Ye shall make your daughters singing girls and harlots, and ye shall mingle in the abominations of the Gentiles. Everything Judah prophesied, his tribe is guilty of today. The scriptures are being fulfilled. Many from the tribe of Judah, as well as the other tribes, are idolaters who follow the doctrines of Rome. The high-level workers of iniquity in Rome use familiar spirits to prophesy lies to you, just as our father Judah said would happen to his tribe. Israelites, when the identity of the Messiah is known, the scriptures will become clear to you. When you follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit, you obtain power. And you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Israelites, stop rejecting the power you gain from the Holy Spirit. The Most High is pouring out His Spirit on His people and increasing knowledge. Don't be afraid of knowledge. Israelites, the belief of Michael being the Messiah is not new. This belief may be new to some of you, but it's not a new doctrine like some of you believe. The belief of Michael being the Messiah is not as popular as the doctrine of Jesus or Yahshua being the Messiah. Remember, Israelites, what's popular with the world is an abomination with the Most High. Also, narrow is the way that leads to life. Only a few will find the road. Before the Word of God became flesh and is now known as Yahshua, he is the holy angel Michael. To those who are having a difficult time understanding this truth, ask the Most High the Father to help your unbelief. Israelites, you can appreciate the Messiah. However, let all of your praise and glory be to the Most High the Father. The Most High is truly our Savior and the Holy One of Israel. Return to Him, for He is pleading with His people. My prayer is that the remnant in this generation hear the call from our Savior, the Most High, the Father. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of peace. 
of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it, and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The Lord sent a word into Jacob, and it hath lighted upon Israel.